being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software, $100, and starting pricing for high-end software, $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal buyers protect... Order yours today to experience all the benefits of Ash Kick and Natural Body Butter. With skin so smooth and soft, you'll thank us for it. Shop Ash Kick and Online. That's A-S-H-K-I-C. Hey there family, it's your girl Chris Kelly and I'm here to remind you to grab your ticket to the most anticipated event of this year. The FDA Expo is coming to you in Dallas, Texas, Saturday, May 27th, 2023. There will be incredible workshops from wellness, business, legal, survival, and educational forums with prominent and powerful figures of today as your host. But not only will it be empowering and enlightening, it will also be entertaining with the FBA fashion show showcasing FBA models and designers. Listen, I need all my designers and beautiful models to go to fbaexpo.com and submit your application right now. To my Dallas family, I'm looking to showcase local talent and I'm in need of a poet. So please, visit fbaexpo.com for vendor availability and to purchase tickets to the expo. Stay tuned for more information and come out and support Black Creation. Get this knowledge. Come see me, come see us, and come have fun. I'll see you there. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Baiter now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. My bad, a lot of loud music going on. What's up? I'm here. Had some technical difficulties, but I'm here. What's going on, y'all? What's happening with you? Glad to have everybody tuning in. Sorry about the the, the technical difficulties, but I'm here. <clears throat> Excuse me. How y'all doing, man? I'm here. We're a little late, but we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, how y'all been, man? How have you guys been? Glad to have y'all tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have y'all in the mix, right here with me, ladies and gentlemen, ready to chop that game up as we always do. How y'all been, family? Hold on one second, y'all bear with me for one second. Let me just get some things together over here. Oh man, we're here, ready to do what we do, as we do it, um, let everybody know that we're live right now. Let's do that. Let's start off there. Let everybody know on Twitter. Let everybody know on your Facebook because, you know, they do the shadow ban thing on me over here. They have a player shadow banned. Um, 
You dig? They have me shadow banned. I'm from the, somebody said my sweater looks like Ivy League. That's right. I'm from Born Fly University. <laughs> but let everybody know that I'm live right now. Y'all retweet this. Put this on your Twitter. Put this on your Facebook. Oh, yes, the hairline is crisp with the, the white chalk outline. Real crisp. Got the Jalen Rose cut. You like the sweater? Yeah, I'm trying to be a little dipped, a little, a little, a little dipped tonight. You know, because I, I'm, I'm doing the museum thing, I try to be a little more preppy. I try to, you know, kind of be fly but preppy at the same time. I try to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, no. But how y'all doing, man? And speaking of museum, um, as you guys know, next Saturday, next Saturday, ladies and gentlemen, we have the March Museum Mixer. Got a great event happening at the Hidden History Museum next week, ladies and gentlemen. Next Saturday, starting at 7 p.m. If you're in L.A., if you want to come to L.A., come on out and kick it with us, man. We're going to have a phenomenal night. Um, it's a great night to network. You get to come on out here, chop it up, network, especially all my L.A. people. I want to see you in the house. Chop up with like-minded brothers and sisters. We're going to have good food for you, um, good music for you. We're going to have a nice comedy show for you, some up-and-coming comedians or some of the some popular comedians around town that's going to throw down, and my, my man Dwan B is going to be hosting. What's up, Anthony Williams from Canada? You need to come on down from Canada and come join us um, this Saturday, this coming Saturday, March 25th at the Hidden History Museum. It's going to be a great night, man. We're going to have a great time. And you get to see the museum, get to see some of the artifacts, get to see what we got in there, <clears throat> get to see some of the icons that we um, are paying homage to. You dig? It's going to be a real fun night, man. You dig? So come on down. And also, when you're there, get you, um, get you a copy of the um, Hidden Colors DVDs. You can get the brand new American Maroon Blu-ray. You dig? Come on through, man. Well, we got autograph posters from American Maroon, which are collector's items. You dig? Those are collector's items. Shout out to Technical Swag. Yeah, you had dreads for 20 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just finished watching American Maroon. See, this is a masterpiece, man. I thank you, man. Listen, before I get started, I got to say much love and respect to all of you guys for making the film American Maroon such a success, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I got to thank you guys. Um, people are really loving American Maroon. People are really feeling the movie. Let me show you guys something. Again, I talked about this last week. Show you, just give you an idea of how well the movie is doing. Amazon sold out immediately, but they got more in stock. They got more in stock at Amazon. And um, right now on Amazon, it's still, let me show you all the current Amazon status. They do have some in stock now. It's Still the number one best-selling documentary on Amazon, ladies and gentlemen, right now as we speak. This is Amazon right here. You can get your, your DVD at American <clears throat> slash Maroon.com, or you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on, on Amazon. Some people already have an Amazon account, so you can get it on Amazon. Amazon, they say that um, it might take a few days to get there or whatever, but we're sending them out immediately. And look on Amazon, I mean, we're going up against the big dogs here. We're going up against some of the major films that's out here, the major documentaries coming from the studios. We're going up against the NFL, you know, the Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, we're, we're beating the NFL right now. Chucky, they got a documentary about Chucky. They got a documentary about the Beatles, we're beating that. They got a documentary about David Bowie, we're beating that. So, yeah, we're not playing around, ladies and gentlemen. This is FBA excellence. That right there is the power of you. I want y'all to understand us getting these number one documentary films. That's the power of you, family. That shows how thorough our support system is. That shows how thorough that you guys will support some intellectual artwork 
that's not based on ratchetness because this is why the dominant society, they get real quiet about stuff like this, but I got to boost this up. This shows that you all, the black audience, is not just so encapsulated with ratchetness, which is what they try to tell us. They try to tell us they can't put out any type of intellectual historical pieces because, well, the black audience, they're just not sophisticated. They want to see some twerking and drinking and smoking. No, we don't. We did? No. We want to see some real information, some real history from some intelligent-minded people. You, you see? That's the side that they don't like to promote in the dominant society, but that's okay because we got the grassroots media here. Oh, the hip-hop movie is coming next for real, for real. That's definitely coming up next. I'm going to start planning on shooting that next month, to be honest. You yeah. think that hip hop documentary really has to come on out? I gotta put a, I gotta prioritize that one. There's a couple of other movies that I wanted to do, but I gotta get that hip hop because I've been talking about that for the longest. And now Crazy Legs and those guys are about to put out some stuff about the Latino influence on hip hop and whoop de whoop, and they man, they're about to start capping so heavy. Because this goes into the theme of today's broadcast, man. Whenever foundational black Americans, whenever we do something constructive that resonates, other people have to center themselves in FBA business. But when we're taking all the bumps and bruises, when we're taking all the hard knocks, a lot of these people cannot be found. A lot of these people can't be found. Yes, yeah, the 50th year of hip hop. So yeah, we gotta we gotta get it popping now because they're about to have hip hop in the Olympics. And now that it has, and it's been blown up internationally, but now that it's being legitimized and it has the stamp of the approval of the dominant society to a certain degree, because now it's super legit. If they're having hip hop dances in the Olympics, now it's legit. So now whenever we create something that outgrows the negative stigma of it. Because remember, when we create something, there's always a negative stigma around it. All right? Simply because we created it. Whenever we create anything, the negative stigma is always there first, no matter what it is. Family, the whole reason the watermelon became a negative stereotype, it was simply because black people pioneered and mastered the growth of watermelon. Not just watermelon, but just other crops. You know? I want y'all to understand this. Why did watermelon become a negative, like an epithet towards black people? You know? Why did that become a, a, a negative word? Hold on one second. The reason why it became a, a, a negative thing is because black people, remember, we were an agrarian people because we were the ones doing all of the agricultural work for the most part. So we knew crops, we knew soil, we knew what worked. We were in the, the dirt and we knew what we were doing. We knew how to cultivate crops and, and make them grow better. Don't let, them, don't let the dominant society make it seem like white mommy, white daddy, they were giving us all the skills and they just said, hey, go ahead and do what you do. Do what we tell you to do. No, we would come. We would come up with some of the innovative ways to make crops grow better, to make buildings stand better, to use certain things to insulate buildings better. We knew all that stuff because we were doing the primary work. So after slavery, foundational Black Americans were going around using these skills for their own benefit. This is why they had to flood us with so many immigrant groups. They had to flood us down. They had to shut that down because they were like, hey, these, these black folks are doing too damn much and they're too successful. These people know the lay of the land. They know how to grow these watermelon and we were growing watermelon and we were selling them and we were making a lot of money selling watermelon. So white society just decided to make watermelons a, a, a negative thing just because I'm white and I say so. There's absolutely nothing negative about watermelon. We were very successful at cultivating them and they just said, hey, watermelons, that's nigger food. Yeah. Yeah. They tr 
tried to do that with potatoes to a certain degree, but they couldn't do it because they needed potatoes too much. You know, and we talk about this in the museum. If you go to the Hidden History Museum, we have a picture of a brother, um, um, this brother here, Junius George Groves. Let me show you a picture of this brother. This is the found, wait, wait, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hold on one second, one second. Let me grab it real quickly. Hold on, guys. Let me show you all a picture of this brother here called Junius George Groves. Y'all bear with me one second. Wait. Why am I, why is my shit tripping over here? Okay, hold on. Junius George Groves. Let me show you a picture of this brother. We have a little um, commemoration of him in the museum, by the way. But this brother here, this brother here, Junius George Groves, he was from um, Kansas. And he was known as the Potato King. This brother right here, became he was a slave. And he was one of the richest black Americans in the 19th century, early part of the 20th century, because he was known as the potato king of the world. He optimized potato growth methods. He produced more potatoes than anybody in the world. All right. This brother right here, this was the potato king. We knew agriculture. They would have to come to us to get the best crops, to get the best fruit, to get the best herbs, because that's what we knew. So they had to slowly take over that and get us out the mix to a certain degree. Yeah? They had to start taking that over. So when you think about potatoes, they make it seem like the people in Idaho had it popping. No, no, we, we had that popping. Yeah? So anything that we create, they have to put a negative spin on it. And if they can't put a negative spin on it, they have to co-opt it with us. When they start talking about potatoes, they have to talk about, well, the white farmers in Idaho, they did great at, at cultivating potatoes too. You, you dig? When it came to jazz, remember, jazz, the the term jazz from what a lot of historians say it came from jackass music jazz was a negative thing when we created jazz they looked at that as negative the jazz those are a bunch of druggies a bunch of weed smoking drunk negroes that's jackass music they're playing like jackasses that's what jazz that's where they get the term jazz from they made it negative until we outgrew the negativity and it became an American staple. Then they had to say, hey, well, Kenny G, if you want to hear some real jazz, boy, listen to that Kenny G. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we created potato chips, too. Yes, we did. Remember, rock and roll was negative. Rock and roll was looked down upon. That was the devil's music. That's nigger music. Even when white artists did it, Elvis, they got on Elvis's case when he first came out. They were like, hey, you're acting like a nigger. Yeah? Elvis, you're, you're throwing them hips like one of them Negroes, Elvis. We don't know about you, buddy. But then the, the, the stigma was outgrown. Yeah? Hip-hop music. Now, hip-hop... For decades, it was looked at as something negative. It's a trend. It's that thug music. Um, they had to put parental advisory stickers on rap records. Rap record labels were getting indicted and investigated by the feds. They were threatening to throw black rappers in jail. Public Enemy, Ice-T, um, N.W.A., all of these guys. There was a negative stigma on it, but we outgrew the stigma. We fought through it. We said, no, we're going to fight for our free speech. If this is a country that has a constitution and it's based on free speech, we should be protected in that free speech conversation. So we're going to say what we want to say because you're letting all of these other people say what they want to say in music. You let, and this was an argument that we were having in the 80s and in 90s too. People were talking about how violent rap records are. We were pointing out, hey man, Y'all have these rock people like Ozzy Osbourne and others. They're doing concerts where they're biting off the heads of bats and birds and spitting in jars and doing all types of vile stuff on stage. And they're protected by free speech. Yeah, Luther Campbell, he was a part of that too. So we're pointing out, you're letting these rock dudes get away with 
literal murder. They're murdering animals on stage. Yeah? So y'all want to play this game with us? No, no, no. We're not going to have that. So now that we fall through the negativity, stay true to our culture that we created. Now that our culture has spread around the world, because you, if you travel the world, ladies and gentlemen, if you travel around the world, what do you see? You see youths all over the world emula emulating foundational black Americans. Some of you who travel, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of you don't travel, brothers and sisters, but let me tell you something. So y'all say I look like an 80s drug dealer? <laughs> I look like somebody on Raising Canaan or something. I do kind of, it does kind of have a 90s, 80s drug dealer look, yeah. But listen, listen to what I'm saying. Oh man, yeah, the, the rock records, hell, going back to the 60s, some of those records would have secret satanic messages in them, dude, if you want to get real deep. But listen, you know, we, we stay true to the culture. You go around the world, what do you see? You see people emulating us. I'm talking about if you go to Asia. I saw some Asian commercial today. There was a bunch of Asian people in, I forgot what kind. It was a 7-Eleven commercial. That's what it was. And I noticed something. It was a 7-Eleven commercial. I noticed this on TV. And it looked like they were Korean. But all the Asian people were young people dressed like us. They were all dressed like us. Yeah? They were all looking, acting, and dressing like us. When they do something that's deemed cool, it's them emulating foundational black Americans. You see? They're emulating us. You go to the Middle East, the youths, if they're not wearing the the cloths and the burkas, whatever you call them, they're wearing hip hop clothes. You go to Africa, many parts of Africa, yeah, they're wearing hip hop clothes about 20 years from the past. You know, people are still wearing P. Miller sweaters and Vocal sweatsuits, but they're still rocking our swag. Yeah? They're still rocking our swag. You, you see? We, we have to own our culture. It comes from us. See, we've had this thing where we want to share our culture. Our culture is for everybody. And that's kind of a gift and a curse because we create so much and we can create things so quickly. We give our culture away and we got to stop doing that. We have to take ownership of our culture. Because we got this thing where the dominant society, they've telegraphed a message. Well, we'll accept your culture only if you share it. The only reason we'll accept your culture is that you have to loosen ownership of it. You have to let us share it with you. So, for example, if we have a restaurant where we serve soul food, yeah, we'll mainstream it, but we got to put Paula Dean's face on it and call it Southern food. You see? They're trying to play that game. Yeah, we'll, we'll acknowledge your culture, but you got to loosen it up. You just got, you got to take some of the ownership off of it so that we can make it more acceptable. We're not going to do that. We're going to own our culture 100% to the fullest. That's why this hip-hop documentary that we're going to start doing is very important. We got to start shutting a lot of this stuff down and not letting them put a negative spin on our culture. That's why I like the documentaries that we do and that they're independent and they're successful. And we don't let nobody loosen up our, our, our films and the success of it. We don't let them loosen up the ownership of it. You know, that's why so many people have a problem with me, because we keep consistently putting out successful products that we don't have to go to the dominant society for permission for. You think? They're not funding any of it, and it outsells the stuff that they put out, and it's quality work. You think? That's why the mainstream media, they always attack me, but they never really mention the films. 
unless they put a negative spin on it. They never really mentioned the films. They, they, they mentioned me all the time, but they kind of downplayed the film, on my films, unless they can put some kind of negative spin on it. Because what we don't do, we don't all lives matter our stuff, just like American Maroon. That movie is very significant because we talk about our culture and what we did here as foundational black Americans, and we don't let any other people center themselves on it. See, when we talk about black people fighting for freedom, if we don't allow other groups to center themselves, they don't mess with it. If they talk about fictional and nonfiction stuff, like, for example, nonfiction stuff like Harriet Tubman. If they talk about Harriet Tubman, they don't have a problem talking about Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad as long as they talk about the Underground Railroad that went to Canada. As long as they talk about the railroad that went north. Why? Because they can center themselves in it. When they talk about Harriet Tubman, they talk about the white church that helped her out. They talk about the white abolitionist who helped her out. So they can center themselves. Just like the movie 12 Years a Slave, they had no problem with that because in that movie, they slipped in a white savior. Remember in 12 Years a Slave, the white savior was Brad Pitt. He was the white man, the, the white liberal, who actually got a letter to the North on behalf of the, the Solomon Winthrop. So they, they slipped in a white savior in 12 Years a Slave. He got saved from the plantation after being falsely um, um, enslaved for 12 years because the white man was the one who got the letter to the North. You see? They always got to have a white savior in these stories. Yeah? American Maroon, there are no white saviors. We talk about what we did on our own without white saviors. We sat out here, we got out here, got off these plantations and put in work. Brothers and sisters were down in Florida, burning down those slave plantations and freeing other black people. That's not a story they want to tell you. They don't want to tell you that. There's no savior in that. Even in the fictional movies like Django. Django, they had the fictional white savior. The white man, that doctor who was with Django, that Django only got permission to do what he needed to do because of this white man. You see, they always got to have a white savior. You always got to center yourself in our business. And they always have to center ourselves or center themselves. They have to center themselves in our narrative. Yeah. What's up, Mark Scott? I'm going to get on that in a minute. But listen. And here's the, the, the insidious thing is when we have other people from the diaspora who are black who sometimes try to sabotage our narratives and our progress as foundational black Americans if they are not allowed to center themselves in it. See, we got to get on that part of the game too. We got to get on that part of the game. If we're not centering all of these other groups who are black, oftentimes they undermine what we have to do. See, we don't think like that. Let me tell you something. I did a movie called 1804. Very, very successful film about the Haitian Revolution. I didn't center us in the movie. I had no problem giving props to the historic brothers and sisters in Haiti who put in that work because that's an inspirational story to me. I was inspired by Toussaint Louverture, Dessalines, um, Duddy Bookman. I was very inspired by the Haitian Revolution story. So much so, we got our money together and invested and put our money into telling that story and it was a phenomenal film. That was one of my most fun films to do. I had a great time doing it. Very successful film. If you have not seen 1804, if you like American Maroon, you'll like 1804. Really like that. A lot of action in it. Great, great film. We didn't, I didn't center us in there. I didn't make it about us. I have no problem giving you the props that you're supposed to get historically. We can pop our collar to you and say, hey, man, y'all did that. Y'all did that, man. Shout out to you. I'm inspired. Y'all did that. We ain't got no problem. 
why do so many groups, y'all have a problem with us saying, hey, we as Foundation of Black Americans, we did what we need to do. It's always, what about me, nigga? Why? That's the problem that we have. When it comes to giving us our props as Foundation of Black Americans, people, if you can't latch on to it and then center yourself in it, then all of a sudden you try to delegitimize it. And that's a problem. That's the problem that we have. Yeah. That's a problem, and folks are going to have to cut that out because we're checking people on that stuff. Yeah? Yeah, and there were a lot of Haitian people who didn't know some of the stuff in the story. I mean, it was a phenomenal movie, man. If you want to know anything, they, they actually teach that movie in schools in Haiti now. They actually teach it in schools there. You know? That's the preeminent film about Haitian history. They, even in Miami and Florida, they teach it in classes there. You understand? Because we really break that history down. We go real deep into all the major players who were part of the revolution and just really, really went deep. We went deep into the voodoo thing. You know, we, we went heavy in that movie. Very proud of that film, and we had a great time making that film. But the thing is, we have a, a problem with us as foundational black Americans when we're saying, okay, listen, everybody, what we're going to do now we, we've helped so many other people. We've carried a lot of people. We've um, assisted a lot of people. We stood up for a lot of people. You think? Popped our collar to a lot of people. Made sure you were good. Harbored a lot of people. Right now, we got to focus on some FBA business right now. We got to focus on us because, you know, there's a situation where we've exhausted a lot of our energy a lot of our resources. So we're going to have to kind of look out for the FBA family right now. Then we get pushback. See, this is the problem. We don't get pushback from all the brothers and sisters from um, the diaspora because let's be real, and I always give props what props to do. There are a lot of brothers and sisters from the diaspora who are very supportive. They'll pop their collar. Here. You, yes, nigga. I, I like that. They'll pop their collar, and I love that. That's fine. They'll pop their collar. The problem is the tether class and the coon class, we got a problem with them. Yeah? We got a problem with them, and we're going to have to holler at them. And, and since y'all can't seem to contain them, then we're going to have to get on their necks about certain things that they do. We got to get on them. Because what we have, we have a lot of the tether classes who come over, and because of a lot of the jealousy and vitriol that they have overseas that they that part of that culture undermining people they bring that mentality over here and we're just another tribe that you're supposed to undermine and we're like no we're not going to do that we can't do that we can't have that we're not going to sit there and just let that happen and not call it out yeah so us we're over here making sure that our lineage game is in order right now. That's one thing. We're making sure we're defining our own lineage. Our brother Claude Anderson, who I got a lot of the game from, had been trying to do that for years. Brother Claude Anderson was one of the first people in modern times to really articulate the need for us as foundational Black Americans to acknowledge our unique lineage. You understand? He started using the term for, for a few decades, Native Black Americans. That was a cool term, but it became somewhat problematic because, and I explained this before, some people got a little confused by it. When they heard the term Native Black American, we knew what he was talking about, but some people were like, well, is that like a Native American mixed with Black? So some people got a little confused, and like Neely Fuller said, we want to alleviate all forms of confusion. We don't want no confusion. So I, I wanted to amend what our brother Claude Anderson came up with as far as Native Black American. I said, let's tighten that up just a little bit. We, we're going to still keep the spirit of what he's saying, because I understand what he's saying, but let's, let's just make sure nobody is confused by the term. So instead of 
Native Black American, I say, you know what? We are the foundation of this country. Literally the foundation. We built this country from scratch. And when you say foundation, and then put that with foundational Black American, that clarifies things to the point where there is zero confusion. And that's a strong term. And now nobody's confused by that term. Nobody can remix it. Nobody can latch on to it. Um, the other day there was a meeting, like a, an online meeting where people were calling into the census people. And by the way, when is the next census meeting coming up? And where can people go to write to send information about the delineation title for Foundation of Black Americans? Because the U.S. Census Board, they're now taking suggestions on the name that we should call ourselves because there's such a demand for us to delineate, to differentiate us from other um, um, black groups because we have a unique history. And there were several people calling in. What's the what's the the link where people can send letters? And also, when is the next um, video meeting? The last one was yesterday. That was the last one. Okay. So there's, there's no more. The last one was yesterday. Okay. Because people were calling in. Some people were saying we should use the term freedman. Some people were saying we should use Negro. There were some people saying we should use um, American descendants of slaves. Um, you know, Strappy and them had a bunch of people calling up. That was Strappy and those guys organizing. And let me tell you something. A lot of that stuff is problematic because you don't want any confusion and people remixing and tethering on to some of these terms. If you use the term freedmen, that's a term that there's yeah, some white people who can say, well, I was an indentured servant. I got free, so I'm a freedman. You dig? You got to watch that. Even American descendant of slaves, that can be remixed and tethered by white people because now you have a lot of white people who tell this lie that, well, the Irish were enslaved too. So we're going to get reparations for slavery. I'm part Irish. And the Irish were enslaved. They were slaves, which they weren't. They were indentured servants, but they'll do the play on word thing. So the Irish can say, well, hell, I'm an American descendant of slaves too because of my Irish ancestors who were enslaved. And they can tether on to that too. You got to be very Trump tight with the words. One thing they cannot remix they cannot remix foundational black American. Nobody can remix that. All three of those words lock it up tight. Yeah? Even the Rachel Dolezals can't latch on to that because you got some people who will try to play the transracial game. If we say we're going to give reparations to black Americans, African Americans, or Rachel Dole is all the hell, I'm a black American, and I've been black for a few years. I've identified as black. So hell, I'm qualified for reparations because I've identified as black for decades. Ever since I got out of high school, I've been identifying as black. But are you a foundational black American? Can we trace your lineage back? Nope. Well, sit down somewhere, Rachel. You see? That's why these words, every word is very important. The found, you're going to get them on the foundational and then you get them on the current. You have foundational black American is waterproof. Yeah. That's a waterproof term. You can't wet it. You can't double dip. You can't do none of that stuff. When you say I'm a foundational black American, you're talking about foundation, meaning your history and lineage, black, your current racial status, and American, your current nationality. You're hitting on all cylinders. So now you can't have somebody in the Caribbean saying, well, um, I was a descendant of slaves. I'm a black American. No, 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 no. You immigrated over here. Yeah, you see? You ain't foundational. 
Yeah. Even the term African-American. White people can claim African-American, which is what they've done. You got white people who come over from South Africa and they'll brag, I'm more African than you. I was born in Africa, buddy. Hey, good for you, but you're not a foundational black American, see? Because now they can't tether on what we're trying to, to do. They can't center themselves. Y'all remember there was a video of this white woman down in Florida. She was at a town hall meeting. So you got it because you, you better understand these white supremacists will get real slick. Hold on. Let me see if I can look it up real quick. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can look it up. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here it is right here. This white woman right here who said she had one. I actually am. See, this, this is what they'll do. Don't think that these people are playing. Hold on, hold on. I actually. Wait, wait, wait. Don't think that these people are just joking. They'll pull this if you let them. She said she had like, she did some DNA test. She had 1.4 Nigerian in her, all right? This type of stuff right here. Watch this, hold on. Wait, let me go up, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I actually am 1.4% Nigerian African. I'm a sister, okay? I actually am 1.4% Nigerian African. I'm a sister, okay? I actually am 1.4. Y'all think these people are joking. They'll pull this stuff for real. They'll show up to the Freedmen's Bureau. That if we establish a Freedmen's Bureau. They'll show up talking that nonsense. They will show up with that nonsense. Don't think for a minute that they won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a sister. I got 1.4 Nigeria. They'll play that game on y'all, dude. No, no, we ain't. No, 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 no. You ain't a foundational black American, ma'am. Sit your ass down. Yeah. They will try to play that on us. They'll do that now. This is why foundational black American, that sews a lot of the stuff up. You just sew it up, make it Trump tight. But. Going back to people centering themselves on foundational black American culture. When you can pop your collar like we pop our collar to other people, instead of just popping your collar to us, there's this whole thing where people feel like they got to latch on to our culture and center themselves and make it about them. This is why. Um, a lot of people hate that we don't use the term African-American like we used to because so many people, oh yeah, their tethers in here mad at my hairline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sometimes, you know, they, they throw the little white chalk on there. That's, that's the thing. They, they throw the chalk on there to just outline and make it crisp when you get it fresh. A lot of tethers don't understand that because the chalk would be way back there. <laughs> that, that's what the tethers are very upset. Are y'all upset with how crisp my hairline is? I see some some janky headed tethers in here right now. Look at this nigga headline. Oh, this is some angry tethers. Oh, no, no. This is pure foundational black American hairline. It's, it's you know, just, just accept it. Accept it, tethers. Don't, don't, don't let the hatred destroy you. They act like there's a cheat code. That cannot be real. Yes, it's real. It's, it's real. You dig? The tethers always, it, the tethers are like bald head chicks with no edges, always thinking somebody got a weave. That that bitch has a weave. No, she she just has edges and you don't, you know. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. used to your, your fellow brothers like Akon going to Turkey and getting um, FBA fur. <laughs> He's getting synthetic bayangs. No, no, this is not that situation. Don't, don't project your synthetic bayangs on me. This is uh, 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 true to the game, 100% FBA hairline. Just, just, yeah, just accept it. Don't, don't, don't be the woman of the group. Y'all better understand. That's one thing that foundational Black American culture. We, we always stay fresh. We've always had the fly hairlines. Some of the best barbering schools were up there in Philly. Oh, we had some of the most thorough barbers. We, we invented thorough barbering. Oh, that's how we got our coins. 
in, in the United States for a long time, being thorough barbers. See, that's a part of my culture, you see. These Negroes always got it. There's always some kind of cheat code. No. He's using magic beans on his hairline. This nigga used juju on his head. No, no, it's just it's just a crisp hairline. It's just a crisp hairline. A lot of y'all just don't understand that. Because a lot of you, y'all try to save money and you be getting your hair cut with rusty spoons and the rust be messing your hairline up. And yeah, y'all look, look. Y'all get y'all hairline together. We, we try to give you some game, you know. <laughs> Them Joloff spices be messing up your hair follicles. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't get mad at us. Don't don't start projecting your hair hatred onto us because I my, my hairline is fly. I have a fly, natural, beautiful hairline because that's part of foundational black American culture. And just because, look, 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 just because your hairline looks like a map of Oakland, that's going to be all right. You got other attributes that you can bring to the table. Just do that, you know. Oh, yeah, we, we, we've we invented fly haircuts. We always stay with a fly cut. That's part of the game. That's why, and, and when we go over to the motherland, as, as we call it, that's how we stand out. You know, you know we're foreigners. Wait, wait a minute. Look at that beautiful hairline, nigga. Where are you from? Y'all know we're not from there. When y'all see our hairlines, you know we visited. You dig? That's how we be standing out. Our crisp hairlines. And sisters with, with nice bundles. Like they see a FBA sister go over there with, with her bundles intact. Like, wait, wait, this is a millionaire. She must be rich with bundles like that. She must, uh, do you work for Oprah Winfrey? They're going to think that you're balling out because you don't have a divestment wig. Sisters, you go over there and your hairline is fly. You don't have a divestment wig. They think you're a billionaire. Do you know Bill Gates? They start asking about other rich people. They're like confused. Yeah. So, yeah, when I go over there with my fly hairline, you know, people start... Asking me to help them get a green card. They're like, nigga, you must have connections. I said, no, I'm just visiting, brother. I'm just visiting. Yeah. <laughs> so appreciate it. Just, just soak it in and appreciate it. Learn from it. You can learn from my hairline. Accept it. Don't, don't be up at night having hate nightmares. Y'all be, y'all, y'all, this is the thing. Y'all be so, that's jealous and hatred of foundational black Americans. Right? Y'all can't even sleep at night. You sitting up with anger, mad at our hairlines. Y'all be mad, sleep, waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. <sighs> Niggas. <sighs> Niggas. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Oh, I had a nightmare that I was surrounded by a bunch of niggas, akatas with these hairlines. Oh, I was a, it was a horrible nightmare. So I'll be mad and waking up in the middle of the night with jealousy. Because our hairlines are fly. And then you be, you don't get no sleep. You be waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And then when you have to go drive your Uber, you be dozing off about to kill your customers. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Um, you're going downtown to the Marriott? You're about, about to run off the road because you've been having hate mares all night over us. You can't even drive that damn Uber. You're about to crash. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh y'all y'all hate that, you know. Even the stuff we go through as foundational Black Americans, we make sure that the drip is on on fleek, as they say. They, we're gonna make sure that we're gonna be looking fly. Everything is gonna look fly. That's a part of our culture. So when y'all see these FBA women show up with their feet all done, it is. Oh, there's hate on that. Some of them non-FBA women be hating on sisters with the nice toes. Look at her. Look at that Akata feet. Look at that. She must have stole money to do that. Y'all be projecting all these weird scams on the folks. Who is she? She must have slept with a white man to get her feet done. No. She just works and go get her damn feet done every week. 
Yeah. A lot of y'all just ain't used to the flyness. Yeah. I noticed a lot of these women, a lot of these non-FBA women, y'all do not get your, your, your feet done. That's one thing. I, that's what we can tell. We can look at certain things and tell. You look down at them feet like, oh, what part of Kenya are you from? Yeah, y'all don't be getting your feet done. Yeah, we know. Yeah, them feet be a beast sometimes. I'm not, not trying to cap, but sometimes them feet be a beast. I don't care how much ass you got. If your feet look like a damn volleyball player and you've been kicking the ball with your damn feet in the air, no. No, no, we, don't, we ain't really trying to get at you like that. I don't, I don't really do third world feet. You know, that's the thing. That's why they be having so many problems with brothers. See, let me tell you something about FBA men. FBA men, you like your women with your hair done, at least semi done, and FBA men like women with nice feet. I'm not the only one. Most FBA men, they like women with their feet done. I'm telling you what FBA men like. They like women who got their hair on deck and their feet on deck. Yeah? FBA men like women with their feet on deck. Yeah, got you got to have your feet done. And a lot of these women they come over and they try to act like FBA women and brothers take a gander at them damn toes and them toes be crunchy as hell. Yeah? All five of your toes look like a whole plethora of granola bars. They're so rusty. And brothers be like, oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm cool. And then y'all get mad. These niggas, they don't like black women. No, it ain't black women. It's We don't like your feet that look like cracked granolas. No, no, no. It ain't. No, it ain't. We ain't got no problem with black women. Because what happens is y'all got the divestment wig and the crunchy feet and white boys will like that shit. Because they like you looking down bad. They ain't got a problem with it. They like the third world look. The hungrier, the better. The white boys like that. Not because it's like something desirable. It's a fetish. It's like a debasement fetish for the white dude. So can we go there tonight? Uh oh, I don't know if y'all want to go there tonight. If we're going to talk now, we're going to talk about grooming habits. Let me tell you, the white boys like that. They like you looking third worldish. If it's up to the white boys, they, they want you to look real bush babyish. They like your feet not to be done and you'd be all ashy. That's a fetish to them. That's like a Tarzan fetish they have. They're like, hey, look in Chike. Can you take off the wig so I can see your edges? Oh, God, that's so hot. And then y'all be online. The white men appreciate my naturalness. No, fool. You're a jungle fetish to this white man. He wants you looking raggedy. Not that he appreciates it. He has a Tarzan fetish. He wants you to, he's slumming. Eh? These niggas don't like it, but the white men appreciate me. No, 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 no. Niggas want you to get your edges together and get your feet done and put some lotion on them motherfuckers. The white boy wants you looking grimy. And that ain't a flex. Yeah, they like that raggedy ass look. Yeah, and most sisters over here don't play that game. That's why they, you know, white boys can't play that with the sisters here. You know, they go for the non-FBA women. They all fall right into that. Y'all better understand what the real game is. If it's up to that white boy, he'll have you walking in the bedroom with a spear. <laughs> Listen, in I got something I want to try tonight. Can you put the... And I, don't get offended. When I bend you over, can you put a bone in your nose? <laughs> he wants you to put a bone in your nose. Well, I'm hitting it from the back. Can you play the bongos? <laughs> he wants you to go full tribal bush baby. Yeah? Man, please. Oh, no, don't put on no deodorant. No, don't do it. Don't do it. I like your natural scent. Yeah, he's slumming.
The white boy is slumming. Yeah. They like you musty and rusty. And then you get around a brother, especially an FBA brother, he's going to be like, hey, hold on, M2K. First of all, we need to go down to the nail shop and get that Manny and Petty. All right. That's number one. And we're going to put some French tips on them hooves. Number two, we're going to get you a nice um, trough of deodorant. We're going to get that popping. And then we're going to go down here and get you a beautiful lace front, and we're going to lay them edges down. The brother's going to get you dipped up right first. FBA brother's going to get you right first. <laughs> yeah, before anything pop off. We ain't just going to, you're not going to come over here and just be all raggedy looking. You know? Because when, when you see, let me tell you something. If you see an FBA woman with, with, with janky edges walking around, if you see an FBA woman walking around with janky edges, musty, and her toes ain't done, she's a full-blown crackhead, all right? We equate that with crackhead, all right? FBA women don't roll like that, all right? And this is what we equate that with, is foundation of black American men. Yeah, I don't give a damn how thick you are. Your toes ain't done, you are just a tad bit musty, and your edges are janky. I'm not touching you. That, that equates crackhead to me. That's what we, that's not, only crackheads roll like that over here. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's an immediate turn off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's an immediate turn off. Yeah. Yeah, we don't do musty. No, 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 no. Yeah, we don't we don't do musty. I'm just keeping it in the buck. Keeping it in the buck. We're talking about grooming habits. So that goes back to some of the tethers in the room. Like, oh, look at this nigga hairline. It cannot be real. No, 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 it's real. Just just appreciate and learn. Just appreciate and respect the hairline and, and learn from it. And don't be upset. You can if you use some juices and berries and you eat right and, you know, stop having your uncle cut your hair so you can save money, you can have a robust hairline like us. Yeah. And speaking of um, non-FBA people, um, did y'all see the thing? We were talking about Burna Boy the other day. Burna Boy was with uh, my guy Chaka Bars, and Chaka's my guy. I'm cool with Chaka. And Burna Boy said some things that kind of rubbed a lot of FBAs the wrong way. Burna Boy said some things, and I talked about this the other night. And y'all retweet this and reshare this. There's a lot of people in here. Let's get like close to 10,000 people in here. We got almost 6,000 people. Let's get like 10,000 people in here tonight. And by the way, while I'm talking, while I'm chopping up game, do y'all see the link below this? There's a link that says Hidden History Museum. Look below. Look down there in the bottom where it says show more, where it says get tickets for the March Museum Mixer at the Hidden History Museum. Get your, get your tickets now, ladies and gentlemen. Get your tickets and join me at the Hidden History Museum next Saturday. We got an event popping next Saturday, um, mu a museum mixer. We're going to be chopping it up with brothers and sisters there. We're going to have good food. We're going to have a comedy show. You guys get to see the beauty and all the great artifacts in the museum. You don't want to miss it, man. Get your tickets. Join us this weekend. Um, HiddenHistoryMuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. Get that. All right. And get the movie American Maroon if you do not have it, ladies and gentlemen. Get the movie American Maroon. But going back to we're talking about Burna Boy. Now, Burner Boy said some things about a black Americans need to go back home to Africa and all of this stuff. And we keep hearing this narrative. Akon talks about that, too. And it's a very interesting narrative. Let me try to find that clip of Akon talking about it. Let me see if I can find that clip of Akon talking about how black Americans need to go back to Africa and Africa would be so popping if we went back and whoop de whoop. Hold on one second. Hold on.
Let me see if we can see that clip. Let's go back to Africa. Okay, is this it? Let me lie to you. Uh, okay, let me see. Let me see. Because he said it a few times. Okay, yeah, this is one right here. Okay, let me show you all this one. Because he said it a couple of times. This is one clip of Akon talking about how we need to go to Africa. My goal is to get everybody to move back to Africa. That's my goal. Okay. I want to get as many African Americans back home to Africa as I possibly can. Because I know the day they move back, Everything they fight for in America, they will not have to fight for over there. All the struggle that they struggling over there, they're going to come there with this mindset, with this mentality, with the finances that they built, you know, the equity in life and bring it back and, and invest that in Africa. Man, Africa could be the strongest nation in the world if y'all went back home. Because we got everything that it takes to be that. We got the resources, we got the land, we got the population, and together we got the strength and we got the know-how. Like, why we ain't doing that? My goal... Man, there's a lot to unpack tonight. Oh, we're going to explain why we ain't doing that. Oh, we're going to explain why. Oh, yeah, did y'all, he got the Turkish FBA hairline. Yeah, he, he went and got one of our hairlines, and it, 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 he's trying. He's trying. He went and got a, went to Turkey and got an FBA hairline. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, and people got the obvious questions. Well, how come it ain't popping now? All the people there now, how come it ain't popping now? You dig? How come people don't have it popping up there now like that? If that's the case, there's a gazillion people there now. You got the resources. Why don't you have it popping there now? This whole, we need to go back. People, it's always us. We need to go back. Yeah? Yeah? Let me play Burner Boy, and I played some of this the other day, but let me play it again. This is Burner Boy talking about our foundation of black Americans don't know where they're from and all this stuff. Hold on. So I'm here with Amad himself, the African giant Burner Boy, and I want to ask you why is it important that the diaspora come home? You know why? The, okay, let's use America for example, right? Because this, we can use it anyway. Yeah, but let's just use America, right? Why do you think the Chinese American, yeah, has their respect? And they're not, they don't go through the things that African Americans go through. Like, even though they might go through their struggles, not taking away from them, right? but they don't go through what the African American goes through. You know why? Because the Chinese American, as a base, he, know, he actually knows where he's from in China. Right. He said, they don't go for what we go for. What does that mean? And they have support from the Chinese government. You understand? Like, the Italian-American. They have Italy. They know where their grandparents came from in Italy before. They know the first person in their family to come to America to start that line that made them Italian-American. They know. Because that's recent. They know because that's recent. Some of those people are still alive. So yeah, you know who your grandfather is. We know who our grandparents are. We can trace our lineage back centuries, by the way. Many of these other people can't. You understand what I'm saying? The same goes for everyone else except the African American. That's horseshit, what he just said. You understand what I'm saying to you? So how, how can an African American and an Italian American be on the same when the how do, I, how do I put this in a nice political okay he's trying he's babbling now an Italian American is on a different field because they got led into whiteness so they got all the benefits and the protection of being white which is a welfare system whiteness is a welfare system for white people white supremacy is a welfare system so it, that had nothing to do with their being from Italy they got led into whiteness, which was a protection racket where you get unearned benefits based on race. And it's militarily protected by the government. We didn't have that. That's what we don't have. We know where we're from. Foundation of Black Americans are from here. This is our home base. We didn't immigrate from any place. Most of the people immigrated only immigrated fairly recently, 
within the last 100, 150 years at most. Most of the people who immigrated here. And many people just really immigrated here within the last 50 or 60 years, to be honest. Let's, let's keep it a buck here. And I talked about this the other day. This thing about all these other folks knowing where they came from and knowing their lineage, and we don't, that's horse crap. I pointed this out the other day. Foundational Black Americans, we know more about our lineage than many of these non-FBA groups. Because our lineage was meticulously documented based on our circumstances. And we're in the same country and we never fled. We've been in the same country that we have built for centuries. We've never fled. So all of our documents are pretty much intact. That's why most of us, you and I, who are foundational black Americans, we can trace our lineage back to the early 1900s, to the 1800s, some of us the 1700s, some of us can go back to the 1600s. These folks can't do that. I want, I want y'all to really understand what I'm saying here. Many of these people from the diaspora, they can't trace their lineage back to the 1800s like that because those countries were colonized so much and so many different governmental colonist groups came in and just shifted everything around. A lot of these folks don't know who their great, great, great grandparents are. They really don't know. Some of these people don't even have proper birth certificates, to be honest. Some of these people were born in a desert somewhere. Nobody really documented what day they were born. You don't have people in some of these third world countries really documenting births like that. Some of these people don't even know their real age. Let's keep it a buck. They don't really have the documents on their lineage like that. And the countries they live in didn't even exist 100 and 150 years ago. Some of the countries didn't even exist. They don't have any records of who they really are and who their grandfathers and great, great, great grand people are. They really don't have that. You did? Let's keep it a, a, a for real buck here. And they like to project that stuff onto us. Yeah, they get a lot of word of mouth genealogy. They don't really know. So, man, y'all got to understand, a lot of these countries over there in Africa, man, a lot of these countries, man, they just didn't even exist um, a couple of centuries ago. And a lot of these countries were put together by Europeans, especially in the late 1800s when they had the scramble for Africa. They started to outline and just kind of carve off. the. And they set up in, um, in, in Belgium, right? Was it in Belgium or Berlin? When they had the scramble for Africa, was it Belgium or Berlin? When the white European powers just sat up and drew a map of all of the places they were going to carve off. They got a big map of Africa and said, Germany, this part is going to be you. Italy, that part is going to be you. Britain, this part, we're going to take the lion's share. France, you're going to take that part. They just carved it up. You did? The countries didn't exist. It's Berlin, right? Right. Even before that, many of those countries were just thrown together. The Portuguese, like Angola. Angola didn't exist. Well, like to the 1500s, something like that. There was no country Angola. The, the Portuguese came and it was called the Kingdom of Congo. They said, okay, the northern part here, this is the Kingdom of Congo. We're going to put you guys together. There's another tribe down there. We're going we're gonna to subjugate you. So we're going to all call this area Angola. They would do that to, to Africa and all of the surrounding parts. Cape Verde, Cape Verde, I think that was that was uninhabited. Wasn't nobody on that, that little island. And the Portuguese went down there and said, this is going to be a slave trading post here. Then they start putting people there. Didn't exist. You dig? Don't let these people run that lineage game. A lot of them don't know their lineage because they were all put together as some kind of amalgamation of colonized people. The white supremacists went over there and just carved out a certain area with different tribal groups and said, okay, all y'all people here, you guys are going to be now Nigerian. All right, there's a white woman, 
uh, Flora, or whatever name, um, forgot what her name is. A white woman came up with the word Nigeria. It was called Erado. It was called something else before. Yeah, this is Nigeria. So this tribe, this tribe, this tribe, all of y'all niggas are just going to be subjugated under this new thing we got called Nigeria. Yeah? You, you see? Yeah, it was named by the Europeans. Oh, yeah, Russia. Yeah, yeah, Russia was speaking a form of French. It was a black man created the modern Russian language. That's Pushkin. Yeah. You see, a lot of folks don't, don't Yeah, Flora Shaw. Yeah, that's her name. Flora Shaw named Nigeria. She's a white woman from Europe. Flora Shaw named the country Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah, the Berlin Conference. Because the, they, they sat there in a room and just carved Africa up and started giving out different pieces of it to each other. They came to an agreement, as white supremacists do, look, this is going to be our territory. They cut it up like drug dealers. Okay, this is our corner. Let's respect each other's block. Right, we're going to trap on this corner. South Africa, we're going to trap on that. That's for the Dutch. Y'all trap there. Um... The Germans were going to trap here. The Portuguese, you'll trap over here. Keep trapping in Angola. We'll, and we're running it like a damn uh, a drug corner. You see? So don't let nobody run that game on you that we don't know our lineage and our... Stop it. Do they really know? They really don't. Yeah? A lot of people just really don't know. And the problem is we're getting so comfortable when we've been so comfortable with who we are. There's this whole desire to uproot us, to tell us, no, 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 no. You got to go home. This ain't really your home. The mistreatment and all that. Don't let them fool you with that mistreatment stuff because we, 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 we're dealing with these white supremacists. We're dealing with these white supremacists and we can still thrive. We were because white supremacy is global. Yeah. Do we, we we got some angry tethers in the room here. Why why are you tethers angry? There's some angry tethers in shut up, nigga. No, why why are you angry? Am I saying anything that's not true? Let's stop right here, because I see some tethers in the room that's upset. Am I saying something that's not true? Y'all stop me if I'm saying anything that's not true. Yeah. Come on, tethers. Yeah, well, let me slow it down because there's some 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 angry hairlines in the room right now. And I'm letting, I, I, hey, let me know if I'm saying anything that's not historic, historically factual. <clears throat> yeah? Because I'm bringing proof tonight. We're going to have some truth telling tonight. All that stuff. If you, everybody, y'all need to come on home. Y'all won't have to deal with them problems over here. Number one, if that were the case, how come you ain't over there? How come you sitting over here in New York somewhere? Yeah? And then talking about, well, the Chinese has a country that will protect them and the, your, your, your home base country will protect you, which isn't true because when those African brothers were up there in the Ukraine getting ran down on and getting kicked off trains and getting subjugated in the Ukraine, they couldn't even call the government in their homelands. They couldn't call on the Nigerian government. The Nigerian government infamously didn't even help them. They were on TV begging foundational black Americans for help. You didn't call on your homeland. See, you're not going to run that game. We see what's going on when y'all go to these other countries and things get real janky for you. Your homeland is sitting here with their hands up like, hey, nigga. And y'all sitting up in the Ukraine asking foundational black Americans for help. Uh, can Keith Sweat help us? We need help. We need Steve Harvey to help us. Right? Y'all were calling us for help. Listen, niggas. Tariq Nasheed, I know I called you an Akata, but I need Akata help right now. Right? Come on. Y'all were calling us for help. We're keeping it in a buck tonight. We're going to keep it real tonight. 
And don't run that game about if we go over there, it's going to be so popping and, oh, you can, you're not going to go through those problems, family. Man, listen, let's keep it a buck. Because, see, my thing is I'm not going to sit here and sell the Wakanda package to our brothers and sisters because what goes on over there, man, there's whole video series of black people going over there, especially to Ghana. Because, see, Ghana has this thing where they tell people, oh, you come on over and live. We got the... Um, the, the year of the return, come on back. Man, there's so many scams and finesse games going on over there in Ghana alone. If we keep it a buck, they're finessing foundational black Americans out of money and land in Ghana alone. Left and right, dude. There's a dozen videos on that stuff. See, that's the thing. A lot of them are mad because... We're not buying the Wakanda package no more. This whole thing where we got to go to the motherland. No, we, we, we're building what we need to build here. We're not, because what happens is there's so many folks then scammed each other over there. They done ran out of folks to scam. So they want fresh meat. So that's why they, yo, come to Africa. Come over here now. Oh man, we are brothers. Oh man, the year of return. We, you will not deal with the racism over here. So they want fresh victims. To be honest, let's keep it a buck, dude. There's horror stories going on over there, dude. Let me let me show you a, a recent video I saw. This brother over there, he had a... Let me tell y'all something, dude. What they do, you can't own the land over there. You can't really own it. You have to lease the land over there. Let's tell it. Let's keep it a buck. You have to lease the land. Oh, they won't even let you outright buy. You got to lease it from somebody or some tribe and you lease it for 50 years or 99 years. And then if you don't pay some kind of tax, they can just take your land. It's some, a big scam they got going on over there. Hold on. Let's keep, we're going to keep it a buck tonight. We're not going to play that, that bullshit. Look, man, look, if you Google, just go to um, YouTube, man. Ghanaian scammers, how to avoid getting scammed out of your land purchase. Don't buy land in Ghana. You got just dozens and dozens and dozens of people scammed in Ghana. Our land stolen in Ghana. All of these people going to Ghana getting ripped the hell off. My brother bought land and there's a problem in Ghana. You dig? This is Ghana. I won't even go to Nigeria. I'd be here all day just pointing out all the land scams. I won't even go there, dude. Just, we won't even get to Nigeria. We could just stick to Ghana alone, all right? We'll be here all day just showing all of the scams that they run on us over there in each country. I don't even want to have to get... It's just too many to name, guys, to be honest. Yeah, you got to lease the land. They don't let you own it. There was one brother, and they this was cold-blooded the way they did this brother. They had him on a lease and then said that he didn't pay something on his lease. So they went and demolished the FBA brother. They demolished his house and then had a, a whole bunch of Negroes over there in the community just looting all of the brother's stuff. Let me show y'all something, dude. And this is common over there. We're keeping it in a buck. I don't give a shit. You get mad. I mean, shit. We ain't supposed to just sit up and go for the scams right here. Hold on. If y'all can see. Um, we were driving past this place um, going, so this is Cape Coast. Not quite sure what's happened. They've just come and knocked somebody's building down, just like that. It's a foundation of um, Black America. It's FBA brother who owns this house. This is, they got his face covered right here. Huh. This is Democracy oh, oh, Now. Oh, I didn't mean, to do, didn't mean to do that. Oh, I hate what I did. Damn, hold on. So in this place has sold the land and has just turned up and is knocking the building down. There he is, the guy in the checkered um, blue and red. That's the MCE. Absolute disregard for justice. If if this is how authorities act in this country, then we're really in trouble. This is so bad. So bad. Uh, right. and look, they're trying to steal our roofs and the sidings and stuff. So what, they just turned up, no notice? This morning they turned up. I don't. I wasn't here early when they turned up. Right. Our people were cooking in the kitchen. They turned the electric off. 
and then they started dismantling the building. Wow. They took the great, that building right there. Yeah. That one, the yeah. Bu the building right here that's destroyed right here. Yeah. I, I just heard when I was in Cape that uh, we, we, somebody put it on our, on our site that um, that building was, still, I have pictures of So basically, they just went and just tore this brother's house down and just basically kicking him off the land after he didn't paid for the lease came up with some bogus reason to kick him off the land, demolished his house, and all these other people are standing around just looting the stuff. Hold on. Oh my gosh, how were. are you still standing? Yeah, they won't pay for all of that. So all these people are yeah. just taking stuff from the house, taking the valuables, and loading it up in their truck. Hey, why are you taking this? I got your picture. Who told you to take this? It is taking the stuff. Are you secure? Are you with them? You see them taking this stuff here? Yeah, look how casual they are. They're just, just casual. Just taking the stuff, not saying nothing, just taking it. They're not even saying nothing. They're just, we just, we just taking it, nigga. Yeah, I'm cool. You see how casual they just, you see how, the, just the casualness of it. They're just over there taking, tore the house down and just casually taking, just waiting their turn, not even saying nothing. And y'all want to sell the Wakanda package to us? No, I'm, I'm cool. You know? Man. Nah, nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah, we you know, we we free lunch to the the those kind of cats like that. Yeah. Yeah. They just sitting there just dismantling that brother's stuff. Yeah, they want you to go over there so you can be victimized. Yeah, I, I thought that was our base. Those are our broad eyes, right? Yeah, that's worse than the hood. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. We don't do shit like that over here. If we see, let me tell you, we don't do that shit. If we see a black person, if they're getting evicted, you don't have brothers and sisters going out there just stealing their shit. Now, if they leave it out overnight, you know, some crackheads might get it. But you don't have people in the community just walking up, taking their shit like that if somebody's getting evicted. We don't do that shit. Y'all know we don't do no shit like that. Yeah? We don't do that. Nah. Don't let nobody... They're, they're trying to get you to, to buy the Wakanda package. And there's a whole bunch of videos like that of people buying land and getting scammed. Um, they'll double sell the land to different people. There's a whole bunch of scams like that, dude. You go buy some land and then they you got a lease and then somebody with more money come along. They'll just break the lease, evict you, and what you gonna do? You, you understand what I'm saying? They're like, what you gonna do? Who you gonna go to? We're all corrupt. Man, please. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm cool in the game. Yeah, I go visit. Yeah, yeah, I go visit, but yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, that's not our get down. That that's not. We don't do that. You know, just how casual they are with just taking the shit in broad daylight, and they're just standing in line like it's the thing to do. Yeah. They sold his land. Yeah. Yeah, the, from what I understand, they sold it for some people who's going to do a hotel or something. I, I guess somebody came with more money. So they're just like, nigga, yeah, we got money from you, but you're going to have to go because some other people want that land and they gave us more money. So bye, nigga. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see them doing it to white daddy and, and Asian daddy. I don't see them doing that type of stuff to them. Yeah. 
So, yeah, we got to understand the game that they're playing over there. What's really going on over there. And, and then they keep trying to sell us on the Wakanda package. And then they send the tether classes over here doing little goofy stuff like this. This is another thing that we see with these, these, these TikTok tethers. This one Somali, this is a YouTuber who does a bunch of Sambo stuff on YouTube. He's going around, I think he's in Minnesota. He's giving white people a pass to say the N-word. Hold on. Will you say nigga or double it and give it to the next person? Double it and give it to the next person. Will you, will you say nigga two times or double it and give it to the next person? All the power to the next person. Say nigga four times or double it and give it to the next person. The next person. Would you rather say nigga eight times or double it and give it to the next person? Harder. Just say I double it and give it to the next person. Oh, would you rather say nigga sixteen times or double it and give it to the next person? Nigga, 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 nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. Will you say nigga or... First of all, tethers are so corny. That, that's not corny. It's not witty. This is why these tethers, they get mad because they, they're so damn corny. They're not witty. They don't have a real sense of humor. They got to do this goofy ass stuff. That's why when they get around us, they get roasted to oblivion. They don't have any comeback. So what they do, they have to get around a bunch of white supremacists and be the one corny Negro out the bunch. You dig? That's how they can get accepted by being the one corny lone Negro out of the bunch. You dig? This is why we have to call these folks out. This is why we're delineating, guys. Now, I know a lot of most of you, most of the brothers and sisters from the diaspora, you're not no corny tether. I know you're not. But damn it, the ones that are, we got to do some straightening. You understand? We just got to do some straightening. These folks are just not going to get no passes. We got to do some damn straightening. You dig? And speaking of the burner boy situation, boy, now some of the um, um, African blogs and all of these people, they've jumped on the Burner Boy situation because Burner Boy actually gave a response to the criticism he got. And this Africa fact zone, like Burner Boy replies to African Americans who criticize him for encouraging African Americans to connect with their African roots. Well, that's not. See, they trying to gaslight and make it seem innocent. No, we got a problem with the way he worded that, like, we don't know who we are. That's the problem. It's not just innocent. We didn't want to connect with our African roots. It ain't that innocent. No, he was like, we don't know who we are and all that bullshit. That's what we had a problem with. A group called Foundational Black Americans. There is no group called Foundational Black Americans. There is no group. There's a lineage, but there is no group. A group called Foundational Black Americans says African Americans arrived in the U.S. from the Caribbean and integrated with Native Americans before slavery. Nobody said that. These are tether lies. See what I'm saying? Those are tether lies. Didn't nobody say no nonsense like that. We arrived from the Caribbean. Stop it. These tethers be saying anything. And Burner Boy's response it's sad to see. Hold on, let me read Burner Boy's response. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? Burner Boy said, It's sad to see that in 2023, there's still such black people who would rather, who would prefer we stay divided and conquered. Maybe, hold on. Maybe it's my accent or something. I never said you are African and not American. I also did not say Africa is part of heaven. Nobody said you said that. You deserve all the land and reparations you want from America, and I'm 100% in support of that. All I've ever done is try to make you understand that you have Africa too that loves you, and I believe coming together as brothers and sisters is the only way forward for us black people worldwide. You work against the progress of our people worldwide if your goal is to keep us divided. Well, damn it, why are y'all so divided there, dude? Don't, talk, don't tell us about no damn division and y'all are not even connected there. 
No, 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 no. Because we don't want to get scammed. And we don't want to be a part of the damn lies. And these tethers sit around lying and scamming. Uh, and that's another thing. There's these tethers who are so mad at us who go around writing these janky blogs trying to pit different groups of foundational black Americans against each other. And y'all got to stop taking the bait with that nonsense too, by the way. These tether bloggers and, and trolls who sit here trying to sow dissension. Y'all y'all should know better than to bite on that bullshit. But this whole thing about us wanting to be divided. No, dude, we're sitting here minding our damn business. You brought us up talking janky. The fuck you talking about? You come over here talking janky about us. And we're getting some straightening. And y'all sit here telling us, well, we we need to go somewhere in order to get an identity. We already have a damn identity. You guys are the one with the identity crisis because y'all fleeing and running. We're fine. Because when we start talking about, and see, this, it, it goes back to reparations. See, when we start talking about reparations, and let's be real. A lot of tethers are upset about the conversation on reparations because they're not included. We're not letting them be in the conversation. And a lot of them have a problem with that because we've been centering them. Everything we do, we've been centering them just by using the term African-American. We center them and everybody using the term African-American. So the fact that we're not really using that term like that no more. They're not centered in the conversation, so they got to crowbar themselves in the conversation now. Hey, nigga, don't be divisive. Don't be so divisive. Dude, we, 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 we're not, we, we got business over here we're taking care of. But you niggas hit us. We're not thinking about you. We, we're talking about what we have over here as far as our lineage. But you niggas, you niggas are not our brothers. You niggas are xenophobic. Yeah, shut up. Boy, when you can't center yourself in our business, all, all hell breaks loose because people are so used to us carrying them. People have been tethering on to us and we've been carrying people so much now that we've let you say, hey, why don't y'all get it together and y'all scrap for what you need to scrap for? Let's Y'all do you. Let's just, y'all, y'all get it together. Wait a minute. You can't leave us on our own without you niggas to help me. No, get it together, then come holler back. Because y'all coming in our business, too many of y'all undermining us over here, so we got to get you out the mix of some of our business that we got going on over here. Because when we start talking about reparations, too many of y'all come over and try to undermine the conversation, so we can't, we, we're checking everybody's paperwork now. And we see a common denominator based on lineage. A lot of people who come from non-FBA lineages lineages, they have a tendency to kind of undermine us. So we're saying, hey, sit that conversation out. This is this is some family business going on over here. The same way we go over there, y'all won't let us get no damn land. We got to lease it from you. You understand? We on that same vibe. We can't have you in our conversation if you ain't from this soil like we are. Yeah? We're doing the same kind of straightening, and we, we ain't even trying to scam you. That's, a, that's another thing. We're not trying to scam you. We're just saying, hey, man, y'all don't really need to be in our business like that. Y'all don't need to be in what we, got, what we got going on over here. Yeah? Y'all don't need to be in our mix here. But it's a real interesting dynamic, ladies and gentlemen. And, sh and, and I, I don't have a problem with Burner Boy. I actually like Burner Boy's music. I actually like Burner Boy's music. I ain't got no problem with Burner Boy. You dig? But when people start talking all of that, we need to go somewhere and we don't know who we are. No, y'all not going that. Y'all not projecting that on us no more. You know, we're not going for that because that's been a projection that people have been putting on us for a long time. And we're not going for that nonsense. You dig? So everybody's getting some straightening. We're straightening everybody. Speaking of straightening, there was this white woman, this suspected white supremacist female who wrote a book about wokeness and all this stuff. And this sister named Brianna Joy, and I've had some issues with Brianna Joy before, but I'm cool with Brianna Joy. I've, I've had some issues with her bed wenching before. But Brianna Joy Gray actually asked this white supremacist a very good question 
a white supremacist suspect. I suspect she's a white supremacist because, you know, they go around using the term woke and woke is a code word for black or anything pertaining to black people. And it's a code word. We know it's a code word. And Brianna did the very smart thing by asking this white woman who kept using the word woke, why don't you define woke? What does woke mean to you? What does woke mean? Can you define it? You dig? Sometimes you got to ask the right questions. And this was a brilliant thing she did. She broke it down real simple. When these suspected white supremacists start saying certain things, ask them questions and make them define what they're saying. And she did this and this white supremacist suspect got thrown all the way off. This was hilarious. Now look at this. Look at this. Hold on. This is good. Check this out. And for Americans consider and for Americans consider themselves very liberal. And probably fewer of them consider themselves to be woke. And so, you know, when, when well, we what does that to mean to children, you? Could, could, would you mind defining woke? Because it's come up a couple times and I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So, I mean, woke is sort of the idea that um, I, this is going to be one of those moments that goes viral. I mean, woke is something that's very hard to define and we've spent an entire chapter defining it. It is sort of the understanding that we need to re -to totally reimagine and re re redo society in order to create hierarchies of oppression. Um, sorry, I, it's, it's hard to explain in a 15 second soundbite. Well, you yeah, look at time. And for Mary. Uh, <laughs> So she got her on the spot. Boy, that white woman was flustered because it's a cold word. So she couldn't say that. So you can't define it any other way. There's no real definition to it. That's how she got her ass. There's no real definition other than it being a cold word for black people. There is no real definition for it. So she started um, white supremacist babbling. She can't give a definition because we know what the definition is. See, the white supremacists, they operate on code words a lot. They operate on code words. So now this white woman, now that she got caught out there and embarrassed herself, she's splaining now. So now she's a victim. So she, they had her write an article on Newsweek. And she's up here splaining now. So they, the, she got embarrassed. So now I was asked to define woke. And my humiliation went viral. So they let her write for Newsweek. So they give the white supremacist suspects a chance to, to clean up. It was a delicate balancing act. I was promoting my book with six kids at home full time. My book, Stolen Youth, about how I believe woke ideology is upending American childhood. It was released a week ago. To give me time and space I needed to do various television shows, I arranged child care for my three kids. Oh, she's carrying. She's being a Karen now. On Tuesday, my husband was working from home while my seven-year-old and nine-year-old children worked through their homeschool checklist. Oh, she's putting it on thick. Oh. I put my newborn down for a nap while I logged on for an appearance on the hill. Right before I went on air, I heard the host speak about parents and what I believed to be in a negative way. I panicked over my career as loud and proud breeder, as a breeder. I often felt attacked by the left and I embraced, I braced myself to be ambushed on air about my own choices as a mother of six children. Oh, she's just being a damn Karen. Throughout the entire interview, I felt a panic attack growing. Oh, God. I was being, it was, the, the Negro scared me. Uh, but I tried just to get through the duration of the appearance without an incident. As I talked, I was stammering, trying not to set traps for myself. Oh, God. Oh, she's a victim. I, I, as I hung up, I broke into a sob. My husband and kids immediately surrounded me. I'm usually not a, a, a crier, 
But in fact, the last time I got a bit tearful was about two months ago at the end of my home birth, during the worst stage of labor call train. Just shut up, lady, stop it. Your racism, I'm not gonna read her, her Karen whining. Oh, she's a victim now. She was victimized. The Negroes made her cry. Oh God, this is a goddamn Karen on top of a Karen. Oh God. She sat here made a fool out of herself. Now she's been victimized. Oh, I was ambushed. Oh God, why did he do this to me? Oh, I had a brain fart because of the Negro. I didn't know there was going to be a Negro interviewing me. <laughs> oh, her little nappy head. Oh, God, I just gave birth. I have post postpartum depression. Oh, God. God, they're just perpetual victims, dude. No, I wasn't making that up. She that she used the, this woman used every excuse in the damn book. Oh, I just given birth at home. I just turned on cocoa milling for my babies. <laughs> I was distraught. I had just had my baby in my arm. She scared my baby with her blackness, and I was trying to protect my child. <laughs> Oh God, these Karens are the, the most. She got trapped up, made a fool out of herself. Now she done been victimized. Oh, they're the worst. They want to be victims so bad. God, they want to be victims so damn bad. <laughs> All that mayo babbling. <laughs> Ladies, stop it. <laughs> Oh uh, God, we were, I didn't know. I thought it was going to be a regular interview. I turned on the television so my babies can watch the Teletubbies. So I wasn't in the right mindset. I just took a Percocet because my abdomen hurt because I just gave birth a few months earlier. So you didn't take that into consideration. I didn't know that a negress was going to question me about wokeness. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lord, stop it, woman. You got caught out there with your bullshit. Somebody hit you with a simple question and flip your whole shit. Yeah. My Lord. Speaking of BS, there's this another one. Look, there's another woman who, um, one of these Democratic shields, Look, because look, you're going to hear a lot about this woke stuff. And we know woke is just a euphemism for blackness. But now this is what they got going on now. Listen, they got this um, democratic shield because now they're going to, we're talking about reparations. We're talking about getting tangibles. We're talking about getting what the hell we're supposed to get. We're not playing games out here. So now... They're using these democratic shields to get online, to act like they're some kind of grassroots people, to toe the democratic line, to run the democratic con game, talking about what the Democrats have done. So they got this woman here who's clearly some kind of democratic shill. It's so obvious. And now they got her giving all of the talking points about what Joe Biden has done for black people. All of the tired ass talking points that are so damn easily debunked is ridiculous. You can debunk these talking points so easily. They can be debunked. Oops, sorry about that, guys. So oh, let me let me show y'all some. Hold on one second. Y'all bear with me for a minute, guys. Oh no, 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 no. Y'all bear with me for a minute. Y'all bear with a player just for one minute. I got some technical stuff going on here. Hold on one second. Uh, da, da, da. Y'all bear with me for one second. Hold on, let me play this real quick. Join us for the March, March Museum, Museum Mixer, Saturday, March 25th at 7 p.m. at the Hidden History Museum in Los Angeles, hosted by Tariq Nasheed and Dewan B. This is an event you don't want to miss. There will be celebrity guests on the red carpet, a complimentary food buffet, a comedy show with some of the hottest new comedians, and a popping after party. This will be the hottest event in town. Get your tickets now at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. That's HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. 
All right, had to bump that real quick. Just had to bump the March Museum Mixer commercial real quick. Just to remind y'all while I'm talking, get your tickets to come join us at the March Museum Mixer next Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. Come on down and turn up with us at the March Museum Mixer. They getting it in in the video, right? They getting it in. <laughs> they grooving. Y'all don't understand how the 80s was popping. Oh, that's in the 80s. That's not the 70s. That's the 80s. But anyway, listen, 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 listen. All right, but let me play this lady, this Democratic shield. And we got a lot of folks in here, by the way. Everybody retweet the show. Let everybody know that we're still here live. Listen, let me let me play this Democratic shill sitting here talking about what the Democrats have done for black people, Biden and the Democrats. Now, listen to these talking points. All right. Listen to this horse crap. All right. The past 24 hours, a special count of people have been claiming the Democrats and Joe Bidens have, have done nothing for black people. I hopped over to congress.org.gov and Uncle Joe's plan for black people. Uncle Joe? I didn't, I didn't even notice that at first. guy. I just noticed that this woman sat, up, sat here and called Joe Biden Uncle Joe. God damn, I didn't even notice that at first. Uncle Joe, this, okay, so you already know, it's a certified mammy. So this is her schooling us on what Uncle Joe Biden has done for black people. Here we go, guys. In my comment section, especially in my videos, uh, in my mentions across all my platforms, saying things like, well, why? Okay. Weird look, janky bundles. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Janky bundles. All right. Especially my videos, uh, in my mentions across all my platforms, saying things like, well, why are you talking about what the Democrats are doing? They don't do anything for black people. Anything. Okay, let's go there. So remember how people were saying that the Asians got a hate crime bill, although black people had already had a hate crime bill. And what what hate crime bill and what how is it enforced? What hate crime bill and how is it enforced? And she's showing the Emmett Till anti-lynching act. Um and um it benefits everyone beyond black people and that it was an expansion of that. Um but also let's talk about this anti-lynching act that got shot down over 200 times and finally passed underneath the Biden administration. Oh, okay. Okay, let's talk about it. The Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act, number one, the person who it was named after, Emmett Till, who was murdered because of Carolyn Bryant, who's still alive, and they're not doing anything to her, so that nullifies that empty-ass bill. Carolyn Bryant is still running around here, untouched, the Biden administration ain't locking that woman up, so they're not even using the damn anti-lynching act on the person who the act is about. It's about Carolyn Bryant and Emmett Till. Emmett Till and Carolyn Bryant, they go hand in hand, all right? They're not even utilizing it for the person it was named after with the person who was responsible for the murder of that boy. So that shows how ineffective that is. Also, a black man was just lynched down in Mississippi a week or so ago. The Biden administration ain't doing anything. There's a brother who was lynched. Some white supremacists were chasing this brother and ended up murdering him. And law enforcement ain't doing nothing about it. The Biden administration ain't doing nothing about it. In fact, when Ahmaud Arbery got lynched, the Biden administration was trying to make some kind of sweetheart deal go down with with Ahmaud Arbery's killers. So ma'am, that's not a good example. You're proving our point with that nonsense. So what else did Uncle, jo oh, Uncle Joe Biden do? Let's talk about Uncle Joe. What else did he do? He was introduced by a Democrat. Okay, let's move on. Remember we were talking about how we don't have livable wages and then Democrat Robert C. Scott decided to introduce Raise the Wage Act. That ain't for us. That's for everybody, particularly damn immigrant groups who come over here. That's not a black specific law. Stop it. I need the Biden administration, but it got shot down by Republicans. Are you further proving our point? That's not black specific. Raise, raising minimum wage ain't black specific. Stop it. 
Oh, okay, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. Remember how we were talking about how we have to end police brutality and we need laws on the books that help end qualified immunity? Well, Democrat Ayanna Presley decided to introduce a bill that actually does that. And they're not doing anything with it. And that's not black specific qualified immunity. They're not punishing these cops. Name the cops that they're punishing with the Qualified Immunity Act ending. Who are they punishing? And it's not race specific, ma'am. Stop it. And the only cops that get punished are black cops. So, ma'am, you're proving our point. Okay, well, let's move on. Let's move on. And we know how y'all love to talk about reparations, although we know that Republicans wouldn't give you a shot in hell. And the Democrats have been talking down on it, too. Now she's about to talk about reparations. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here we go with the reparations. Let's see. Uh-oh. To give you reparations, uh, they've actually vocalized this. Um, so did the Democrats. The Democrats vocalized they don't want to give it to us, too. But Representative Sheila Jackson Lee... Uh-oh, uh-oh. She said Sheila Jackson Lee. God. Oh, I almost don't even want to go on no more. <laughs> you already know Sheila. Well, Sheila Jackson Lee. Oh, God. I almost don't want to go on. This stuff is too damn easy to damn debunk. This is too easy to debunk. Lord. Oh, God, I, I almost don't want to go on, but let me just, we are, Sheila Jackson Lee, we already know what nothing burger that is. Sheila Jackson Lee is a non-FBA Caribbean who put that nothing burger, HR 40, that is a stalling ass nothing burger, means nothing. It's a study for reparations, doesn't talk about any money. It only talks about a study. It's a nothing burger. Hold on. Actually introduced the study and development of reparation proposals for African Americans. Which means nothing. Act underneath the Biden administration. And she's a Democrat. Remember when Senator Cory Booker decided that he was going to introduce the Crown Act of 2021 underneath the Biden administration and then Republicans shot it down? Yeah. The Crown Act, another nothing burger because there's still black girls and black kids getting punished because of their hairstyles. That act ain't doing nothing. They're not protecting these kids. Every week we're still hearing about black kids getting kicked out of school or getting their head cut in school and that Crown Act ain't doing nothing. You're not punishing anybody with the Crown Act. Lord, okay. Now the lift every voice plan for black America. Stop it. Remember when Joe Biden introduced his plan for Black America called the Lift Every Voice Plan for Black America? Where he actually has six points where he introduces his plan and it goes into more detail on the... Oh, God. Okay. The Lift... The plan was a nothing burger. Look at the six points. Advance the economic mobility of African Americans and close the racial wealth gap and income gap. How? He didn't do anything. How? How was he doing that? He didn't do anything. Expand access to high quality education and tackle racial inequality in the education system. How? What, what, how? how? He didn't do anything. Make far reaching investments in ending health disparities by race. How? Strengthen America's commitment to justice. That's a symbolic thing. That's not a tangible thing. That's an ideology. That's an idea. Make the right to vote and the right to equal protection for real for African Americans. How, nigga? How? These are vague ass ideas. He didn't implement nothing. Address environmental justice. Stop. Okay. Okay. I'm about to have a damn stroke with this bullshit. <laughs> Ma'am, you're proving our point. This is just a bunch of nothing burger sloganeering. This is sloganeering. Okay. Okay. Website. Where's the Republicans put it? 
instead of saying that Democrats are doing absolutely nothing. Which they are not doing nothing. They're doing nothing. They're not doing a damn thing and you proved it, ma'am. To help benefit black people, you can actually look up what they're actually doing. Nothing. You just sat here with your synthetic tired bundles looking like Easter egg basket grass. You're sitting here proving our point for us, ma'am. Otherwise, you're just yelling into the void, sounding stupid. Oh, my God. Oh, that, that's that roll in my wheel. If we, don't, if we don't fall for the nothing burgers, we're just stupid. Yeah, you need to be these stupid fools. These are the same talking points that Roland gives, right? These are these same tired ass talking points that Roland and those guys throw out. And if we if we don't buy it, y'all you y'all some stupid fools. Y'all just stupid and don't see the forest because of the trees. But he, he. man, if you don't stop, woman. Oh God! So y'all, we got we're gonna see more of these type of weirdo people, dude. We're gonna see more of these type of idiots, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's that boule talk. That that boule the lynx Jack and Jill shit right there. Yeah. Oh, we about to hear this nonsense. Yeah, she's clearly on the payroll of one of these um um online think tank groups that they put out here to spread that horse crap. If you don't stop. Man. They always get these weirdos to do the the dirty work for them. You think? They always get these weirdos to kind of toe the line for them. Yeah. Man. So why did, did was rolling back on the Breakfast Club? When was rolling? Shout out to the Yeah, yeah. If y'all want me back on the Breakfast Club, holler at Charlemagne and those guys. They know how to find me. Y'all want me back on there? Because I've been doing a whole bunch of other stuff. But yeah, y'all holler at Charlemagne and those guys. Let them know. Shit. They know how to reach out. Um, but listen, this is why we got to be on our, our grind. We got to be on top of our our, our business. We got to stay on our square because they're, they're throwing everything. They're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at us to try to throw us off, to try to undermine us because we're so codified right now. We're extremely codified right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're on code heavy. And we're not getting off that, ladies and gentlemen. We're not letting people take us off our square. You then This is why you guys need to get the movie American Maroon. You want to see some good information, some thorough educational information, get the movie American Maroon right now. American dash maroon.com this is the film that you need to be seeing and you can see it with your family you can see this with your family ladies and gentlemen you need to be watching movies like this because look movies are allegories a lot of movies that you see all movies have some kind of subliminal message so you might as well watch a movie with the right message you understand the stuff that you see out here, you better watch what you are letting your kids digest. Because movies are propaganda. And some and propaganda is not a bad thing. Propaganda is not a bad thing at all, as long as it's propaganda that's going to empower you. And as long as it's correct propaganda. See, our movie, American Maroon, we can verify everything in the movie. You want to post it? Get a poster. You got it in? Yes. We got autographed posters at American-Maroon.com. You can get the Blu-ray or you can go stream it now at fbastream.com. You can stream it right now, high definition. Or you can have the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray is good to have because you have a physical copy. You did? Excellent film. People love the film. It's number one on Amazon. These movies, look, we take our time to do these movies and we make them comparable to movies that's in the mainstream. You think that's why they do so well. We don't just throw them together. We really take our time with the cin the cinematography, the lighting, the sound, the color, the colorization, just everything. The the historic images, the reenactments. We really take our time to put out good quality product 
for our audience. And, and I'm, I'm giving my black folks some game here. If you want to have a successful product, I always tell you this. Respect the black audience the same way you would respect the white audience. Because, see, a lot of times on a subconscious level, black folks will put together some janky shit if they know it's just going to be a black audience. A lot of black folks got a tendency to just throw some shit together and kind of do it half-ass. It's black folks. They'll, they'll accept it. You just throw it together. No, don't do that. Make the quality good for black audiences, too. Black audiences deserve high-quality stuff. That's why people can appreciate the film. You look at the film and there's a pride in it because it's a it's for black audience and white people can watch it too. The primary audience is black and you see the, the, the cinematography and the quality of it is thorough. You see? Man, we spend a grip just on the costumes. You look at the costume and we got real Civil War and 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 outfits and, and, and military outfits from the 1800s, authentic outfits, stuff like that, just the little details, you know. We, we shot in like log cabins and we, we shot in places that, that look exactly like the 1800s, you dig? The reenactments are phenomenal. We take our time to make sure everything looks good. Yeah, the quality, people can respect the quality of it. And you're learning some good game. Yeah. And we, we had a great time shooting the film. Um, my man, the, the ladies like my brother uh, who played um, John Horse. Some women were asking about that brother. He did a phenomenal job playing Don, John Horse, my brother D. He's worked with me on a lot of stuff. Very good actor. Um, the guy who played... Andrew Jackson. He looks like Andrew Jackson. He was a great actor, by the way, too. That was the guy, the guy who played Andrew Jackson. What was his name? Um, guy, he had a real weird name. I can't think of his name offhand. But he played Andrew Jackson in American Maroon. Did a phenomenal job. He did a phenomenal job. That's dude, I was when we were filming, I, I was talking about some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. He was one of the dudes who had a real weird food request. Yeah, yeah. I really wanted to get him because, number one, he's a very, very good actor. And also, he looked like Andrew Jackson, which was very important. And oh, I can't think of that guy's name offhand. I can't think of his name. Yeah, he, he looked just like him, right? And um, he had like a real weird food request. You know, he was like, yeah, Tariq, when I, um, if you have food for me, it can only be vegan um, there can't be any dairy. Um, if there's going to be eggs, it has to be from a free range chicken. If there's going to be a salad, the salad dressing has to be gluten free. I'm like, dude, nigga, I'm going to give you a coupon for Chipotle and you just go get your own food. Dude, I, I, we, we can't do all that. Circus. Yes. That's his name. Thank you. Thank you, Michael Warden. Yes. His name was Circus. Yes. Yes. That's his name. Circus. His, his name is Circus. His, Slazuski, Saluski, something like that. But his first name is Circus. Had a real weird name. Yeah, he was a phenomenal actor. Yeah, he was a phenomenal actor. Yes. Yes, Circus. Yeah. <laughs> he gave us this weird ass food list, man. Yes, Tariq, if I uh, if you give me a beverage, it mustn't have cane sugar. It must be sweetened with honey and peppermint. I'm like, dude. No, I'm, okay, let me just let you get your own food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I respect the diet. Yeah, yeah, I respect the dietary styles. Just look, I, I can have you just bring your own food, dude. I, I just got to have you bring your own food. Yes, if, you, if we have any type of tofu, um, it must be seasoned with sea salt from the Mediterranean. Um, I cannot eat anything less. If there is a chicken... Um, if there's going to be chicken, uh, it must be vegan chicken. Uh, we, we cannot have any type of chicken. Uh, it has to be free. Now, if there's if there's an egg, if there are any eggs, they must be scrambled with the yolk taken out. And it must be the egg of an ostrich. And the ostrich must be must have been raised in Madagascar in a, a tinfoil house. 
that emits solar rays because we cannot have any solar energy from that part of the world beaming down and coming through the eggs. It was a weird ass list this dude gave me, man. It was, man, I was like, what the hell, dude? I, I can't do all that, dude. We, it's, it's enough dealing with the rest of the cast and crew. You know? <laughs> My God. You know? I said, man, go, go, go down to, go down to Church's Chicken and get his ass three hot peppers. All right, you eat that, motherfucker. <laughs> You're going to get you three hot peppers and a biscuit from Church's, nigga. Because <laughs> you are doing the most, you know, man. But yeah, but everybody did a phenomenal job in the movie, man. Everybody did a phenomenal job in the movie. It was phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Shout out to Nikki the God. The name classification link. Um, yes, Nikki the God put up the link. This is very important, guys, for the name classification. Um, right here, everybody needs to go here. Let me throw the link up here. And put your comments in about the name classification because we need to let them know we need to be classified as foundational black Americans. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be classified as foundational black Americans. That's the link right here. Let your voices be heard on here. Let them know what our classification be. We should be classified as foundational black Americans in the next census. So let your voices be heard in that link at regulations.gov. Regulations.gov. That's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Regulations.gov, ladies and gentlemen. All right? All right, let me get up out of here. Um, it's been real. Let me play the commercial for the um, Hidden History Museum um, mixer that's happening next Saturday. I want to see all your faces in the place. Don't forget... This is going to be the turn up right here. Join us for the March Museum Mixer, Saturday, March 25th at 7 p.m. at the Hidden History Museum in Los Angeles, hosted by Tariq Nasheed and Dewan B. This is an event you don't want to miss. There will be celebrity guests on the red carpet, a complimentary food buffet, a comedy show with some of the hottest new comedians, and a popping after party. This will be the hottest event in town. Get your tickets now at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. That's HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. All right, there it is right there. Boom. It was getting it in, wasn't it? But yeah, come on down to the museum, man. We got a great event this week. We're going to have a great time at the museum. We got some great comics that's going to be there. We got good food. Um, well, the sister who um, catered, uh, one of the sisters who catered our movie, American Maroon, the, the Meek Mill truck, she's going to be there. We got good food, great, great food. Um, Y'all come on through. We've been on here for a long time tonight, but we, we did a long, good broadcast tonight. Share this broadcast all over. Share it on your Facebook. Share it on your Instagram. And again, go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Come on through for this week. Get your tickets now. Also, go to American slash Maroon. Get the American Maroon film. Anyway, I'm out of here, y'all. 